Hi, this is Wonder Kids, a podcast where you ask all the big science questions and the amazing SciTech staff find the answers. My name is Rose, and right now you are listening to me speak through the power of the internet. I've been thinking a lot about the internet lately because of some questions we received from Ariel and Alia. Have a listen. Hi, my name is Ariel and I wonder who made the internet. Hi, my name is Alia and I just wonder how when you search something up on the internet it knows exactly what you're asking and it can bring up all the resources in such a short amount of time. To answer those questions, Alicia joins us today. Hi, my name's Alicia and to answer your question, first we need to look at what the internet actually is. Whether you're playing a game, calling someone on FaceTime or watching cat videos, the internet as we know it today is where it all happens. It's the best place to share or find information. But why was it made and who actually made it? To answer that, we have to travel back to the 1960s. Back then, computers were mostly used by scientists to do complex maths problems. These computers were so big they could fill your entire living room at home. As researchers traveled and worked on other computers, they needed ways to communicate with each other. So as a solution, some Swiss scientists made a way to connect two computers together with a cable to send a message. But sharing information between the computers didn't always work because different computers all communicated differently, a bit like how people from different countries speak different languages. So another group of scientists designed a cable to do this called the ethernet cable. Years later, other scientists discovered a way for computers in different places to find each other. They gave them all special addresses called IP addresses. Now messages didn't get lost along the way. But we still have a long way to go before even the first web page was created. Fast forward to the 1980s, and personal computers are in most households. Email was invented, and scientists found a way for the internet to travel over phone lines. They called it dial-up. All of these inventions gave rise to the biggest one yet. In 1992, a scientist called Tim Berners-Lee made a way for information to be stored on pages. He called it the World Wide Web. This is where things really took off. Now anyone could make a web page and anyone with a dial-up connection and PC could see that web page. Meanwhile, back in Australia, some scientists at the CSIRO stumbled across something very cool. They were researching exploding black holes when they'd accidentally invented Wi-Fi. This meant that you could now connect to the internet wirelessly. Since then, the internet has grown and new technologies are being created all the time to make it easier and faster for us to connect and share information. So in answer to your question, who made the internet? It wasn't just one person or one team of people that made the internet. It was loads of different people from all around the world working on the same problem over many years. So next time you load a web page or watch a YouTube video, you can thank hundreds of people that helped to make that happen. And I just wonder how when you search something up on the internet, it knows exactly what you're asking and it can bring up all the resources in such a short amount of time. So first we're going to talk about what happens when you actually look something up. So websites like Google, Yahoo, and Bing are all called search engines. Search engines are just there to make it easy for us to find information on websites. Without a search engine, we would have to remember the actual address of every site we wanted to visit. Instead, we ask Google and Google tells us where to find the answer. But how do they know what to bring up? And how do they do it so quickly? They do this using a program called a web crawler. Web crawlers are digital programs or bots. These bots are sent out to visit every single site on the internet. Can you imagine a spider on a web? Web crawlers move along just like a spider, following all the connections and links on websites. Google has a cute name for theirs. They call them Google bots. As these digital bots are sent out to visit every page on the internet, they take a snapshot of the information on that page, like keywords and subjects, and most importantly, they remember the address to the web page. This means that when you search for those words or subjects, Google can quickly bring up the correct page. Search engines are always trying to get better at understanding what we actually mean. 
by looking at patterns in the questions we ask. Have you ever typed the beginning of a sentence into Google and noticed it's trying to guess what you're going to ask? For example, right now, if I type, where can I buy? Dot, dot, dot. The search engine offers to finish my sentence, giving some helpful suggestions like, where can I buy toilet paper? Or where can I buy hand sanitizer? This is because lots and lots of people are asking Google the same question. So it assumes I might want to know the answer as well. Search engines are always improving, becoming better and better at helping us quickly find the information we need. So I wonder what they will be like in the future. Thanks for those answers, Leisha. So, the internet was invented by lots of people instead of just one person, and search engines are fast because they learn from our searches. We also learnt some new words today. An IP address is the address given to an individual computer. A search engine is a website that helps us find other websites on the internet. A web crawler finds websites for search engines to remember what it looks like and help us find it when we need it. Thanks for listening to Wonder Kids. This series is brought to you by SciTech. Explore your world through wonder.